Here are three techniques to make heart canes. These first ones that look like jewels. Start with the jewel cane. You can find that video from last month or from, I think, three months ago. The link is in the PDF. So any round cane that you want to make into a heart, you squish it flat, fold it into a U shape, and then pinch the bottom. You have to be a little gentle with pinching the bottom because it's easy to make the top look like pointy ears. The nice thing about hearts is they come on all shapes and sizes. They can look very illustrative. They don't have to be absolutely perfect. So there's the heart. It can be done with any log of clay. And then you can choose whatever you'd like for an outline. Here I have a very thin sheet of black clay. I could just continue wrapping it, but I decided to cut it to make a sharper point and also because it's harder to cut it at the top of the heart. Now this is on the thickest setting of my pasta machine. I love wrapping canes this way for any kind of background because it's so smooth it ensures a great, um, in, uh, like a very consistent background. So now I've taken it from the bottom and it fits right there in the top. That's because I want this specifically to be a round cane. So I kind of have to round off those sides as well. But as you see, the heart itself is encased very nicely in layers of sheets. And so it's untouchable and stays intact very nice. So that one goes over there. Kind of that way we're rounding out the top and the bottom simultaneously. Same thing on the other side. And you'll notice this isn't perfect, but it's more than sufficient to make a really nice long heart log cane. So from there, I reduce it and start by choking it. And I've rolled this into um, 12 little sections because I want a block that's all hearts. So I fill in these little spaces with white little white logs. I also need them in the corners, and I haven't done that in this case. So. Um, you'll see it's a little tricky because I forgot to do the corners. These I want staggered. I could just stack them on top of one another, but there's kind of that space to stagger them, so I, re I really like that effect. And as you'll see, often, anytime you want a continuous pattern, just take it off one side and fit it into the other side. And this is where I need to kind of fill in a little bit more in the spaces but you get the general idea. I saved some of it off to the side because I wanted just a single heart. And there it is. And now for the candy hearts. I love these. I think they're so cute. Those were also done in the continuous pattern technique. But you just start out the exact same way. The first steps are the same, so I won't repeat them. The difference is now you add one little extra section of clay that's supposed to look like the side of the candy heart and it's supposed to make it look three-dimensional so you're going to want that um, those edges to be really smooth here i'm adding some clay it needs to be a little less than what i've added here you want the line where the side and the heart come together to look really smooth and sharp I'll explain that more in the pdf and this time i'm not cutting the layers and doing any cutesy switch around. I'm just making a little extra packing. The stuff at the bottom might be unnecessary, but this one at the top is, I think the most necessary of everything I just added right there is the top. Well, it depends if you want it to be a circle or a heart shape at the end. I did want this to be a circle, a heart. Um, <laughs> I wanted it to be a circle because I wanted to make that block out of it. And here are the three colors of candy hearts. And here is what they look like 
Again, there's those little tiny pink logs in between the spaces. You don't have to stack them, I just think it's fun sometimes. Here's another one. Um, the stacking wasn't necessarily, but I'll show you how to do all these individual hearts. The only one I'm not showing here is the pink um, because it's in another video. Okay, so but this little pink one I'll show. Same as the other one, fold and squish, although that's even easier because I just had a lot. All I did was take a log of clay, fold it and squish it. This is the gold from last month's tutorial. I've used that block for a lot of things. Same um, layering, cutting, switching to make the circles. Doing the same thing. I thought that those outlines, those gold outlines were a little bit too thin. So this can't even go through the pasta machine because it'll be too thin. So I just took a big old thick slice of that gold. Doesn't even have to be perfect, but I am trying to um, make sure it gets in the top of the heart there. Same process. And there is a heart with a little gold outline. Okay, I love this, so easy. Got that blend, stack one on top of the other. It's so easy, it's so much fun. Round it out a little bit. And now look that look how much, that's not very much clay I have in my hands there, but it makes a lot of, of a cane. A lot of a, it's a nice little cane. So now you can just play around with hearts. Um, this one I decided to put like a little doily scallop around the outside. You know, if I didn't make enough, I could just make more and add it. Um, it's not real exacting. For all of these, it's better to do it smaller than larger because um, a little goes a long way. You, you might not need that many hearts. So there it is. This can also be done with a translucent background, so it really is like lace. This one has a black background, of course. These are, I love doing this for the backing. This is one of those teeny tiny triangles. Someday I should do a whole tutorial on these. These are so great because they go so quickly. And they're curved triangles, but I've been able to pull them out and twist them super easily. And now it's just a quick, I don't even bother cutting them. I'm just shoving them in there and breaking them off. And it's the background. There they are, so cute.